Hi guys, welcome back to day four of our Christmas advent calendar. Today we'll be painting a really festive scene. So it's kind of like this, uh, you know, some pine boughs, some garlands, and we have baubles hanging off it and ribbons and a crystal wall sconce. So it's just a very fun festive page. So we started with this little wreath, the sort of mint green one, and then we moved on to the red one, which I'll show in a minute. And now we're doing the garland page. So here is the red one we did yesterday morning. So I'm sorry this video is late. I'll talk about that a little bit later. And hopefully I can get it all edited and uploaded by tonight. But uh, so this was our second day and what I, or, you know, our third day of Vlogmas, but our second day of painting. So what I have kind of tried to do is stagger the videos so that they're um, progressive and they build upon the things that were learned in the video before. So I know a lot of you have asked me for sort of beginner exercises and beginner videos and these are just some really nice ways. So it takes quite a while to kind of figure out how to, you know, what kind of videos I can do that will cater for beginners. And then as you advance, you can also use these videos and do more detail and, uh, you know, will, the videos will still be helpful and useful. So you can see that I just drew out the garlands on the page and now I'm drawing the bow. And one of the things to note is how lightly that I am sketching. So you don't have to do your initial sketch very dark. You want to keep that light and be able to change that as the picture or the painting emerges. And so instead of a bow on this side, I decided to do a little wreath to kind of uh, play on the theme that we've been doing this week and I thought it just is a nice uh, thing to kind of change up so you know you've, you're getting a little bit of difference of symmetry here and I'm also just adding a little shield into the boughs here or the garlands and then we will also add some baubles in so on hanging down from the garlands we're going to add baubles at differing heights so some of them will hang a bit lower some will be a little bit more closer to the bow so we're going to try out a new Tintoretto squirrel mop brush today so this these are newly available at Jackson's this is an Isabay one I've showed this before in the videos and I wasn't happy with the brush uh, this is the new one we're going to use today it's the Tintoretto one with the black and the gold so it is a number four and the Isabay one is a zero I'm not really sure I think that the Tintoretto one's going more off the sizing of regular brushes not mop brushes because the zero mop is a little bit uh, larger so I'm not really sure where the sizing comes from but I'm just showing you the difference here and since day one and the Isabay one has was double the price and I, I try and show you here you, I realize you can't see it so I'm, I've got to change the camera but it drips out of this plastic uh, part and every time so you can just see a little drip there but it has already dripped several times and so then I um, clean off the Tintoretto one I've never painted it before but you can see there was just a tiny drip there uh, it didn't drip I tried to drip it over the cup and it didn't drip and then um, so this only dripped I think once maybe or maybe not but but the um, this is the reason I really love the da Vinci ones that I always recommend because I have never ever had it drip uh, water onto my painting so the Escoda uh, number six and the da Vinci uh, double zero that I recommend that will be listed below they're still my top recommendations but as far as uh, a travel brush goes and a really nice uh, brush goes this Tintoretto Tintoretto one these are beautiful so anyway let's get back to the painting so I am using here the uh, Earth Mineral Arts Lichen and Sage so it is a beautiful color and I will also show you how you can create this color by mixing a little bit of green with a brown and then even add some white if you want to as well 
or just really water it down. But you can see that I've started with my lightest color and I am just haphazardly kind of putting the leaves across the garland, leaving gaps so that I can add the darker colors. So I've stuck, you know, you've got to start with your lightest color in watercolor. Now I'm adding like a middle green. And again, if you only have the one green, uh, you can mix like a bit of yellow ochre or an, you know, a brown with it to get it lighter and then a darker brown to get the more olive brown that I use next. Okay, so what I am going to do now is just mix up a little of the green with some of the uh, sort of more ochre brown that I have on my palette. And then I add a little, a touch of blue as well to see if it needs a little bit of that. So, you know, this is where you can experiment with your mixing. Uh, you can, you know, to make a green, obviously, if you don't have a green in your palette, you can use... Uh, the different blues and yellows that you have and experiment that way if you have greens you can add a touch of the ochre and a touch of white to make this kind of sage green if you want to add make a darker olive green you can add a touch of a brown and then you can also add a touch of blue to make it a little bit more eucalyptusy. So the middle colour that I used there was the Verdigris from Rivervale Watercolours. She makes the handmade watercolours and I featured her pyrrole orange, oh, sorry, pyrrole red yesterday in the wreath and I think it's already sold out but um, I messaged her about that and she said that the pyrrole red is a very hard uh, colour for her to make and she has to mix it for, you know, hours and uh, fill up the pan four times so it is a pretty laborious sort of a job for her and um, I think that's what gives it its beauty like it's such a lovely red and it's because she puts so much effort and work into it so uh, she said she will have some available I think in the new year there still is some available in some of her mixing sets and um, I will let you know when it becomes available again but she does have the ruby red available, which is one of my favorites. I really love that one. And I think that Nib's watercolors, my other favorite, um, one of my other favorite handmade watercolor shops has some sparkly reds available as well. Okay, so you can see that I'm now painting the bow. And again, I started with the softest, lightest pink, which is the shell pink, Holbein shell pink. And then I am now, using Opera Rose. So I'm not sure which version this in it is. It's Daniel Smith or Schmincke. I also just watched the Windsor and Newton one, which is beautiful and really neon. So I think I might try that version next. I'm not sure, but um, you can see here that I'm just kind of doing some swirls for where the bow is hanging down. And some of it I'm painting behind the garland and some I'm painting in front. And even though this side is going to be a wreath, I still want the bow hanging or, you know, the ribbon hanging down from it. And basically, I just want this page to feel very festive, very colorful. So I'm choosing very bright colors, very pretty sort of colors. So I am using the Turner Pearl Red, even though it's like a, it's really a pink, um, uh, like a, a pink pink. Uh, pearl kind of a color and if you have either Holbein Brilliant Pink or Shell Pink um, you can mix that with Pearl White as well to create something like this maybe with a touch of Opera Rose or a deeper pink in it. You know one of the reasons I have so many colors is because uh, otherwise I'd be mixing for the whole video so 
you know but I definitely want you to know that you don't have to have this many colors you can mix a lot of these colors but for me anything that cuts down time as well because you know the videos are so time consuming to sort of produce so anything you know that helps me paint more than rather than mixing that that obviously helps so I really want these baubles to have sort of a faceted uh, light experience so I am using a bit of Sugalite on one side I use a bit of the Turner watercolor gray gold so you can mix a little bit of a black or a graphite with a gold and by the end of it we have really filled the baubles with a lot of different colors which is what you see when you look at a Christmas tree you know you don't see one color but you see many colors at once and that's what really makes the whole thing sort of twinkle so you don't have to use this color scheme if you like blues you know use an entire range of blues starting from a very pale blue to a darker blue sparkly blues you know sparkly dark and light blues just um, maybe a, a tiny touch or flashes of purple or silver this is an exercise that you can get really creative in so you know I could paint this probably five or ten different times and every time come up with a different color scheme and a different result now that the baubles have dried a little bit I am putting in some cobalt violet the Winsor & Newton cobalt violet because I, I uh, so I want them to dry a little so that it bleeds a little bit but it you know and flows a little bit but that there is still that it's not going to take over the entire bauble and then I'm kind of taking some of what we did for the first wreath and just making a small wreath here on the side. And I want this to stand out a little bit and be its own sort of um, decoration. So I have omitted the middle green, the verdigris that we used as the sort of middle color in the garlands. So I've just done the sage green and then a little, a few little bits of the uh, dark olive this one's the so I think it's the green umber from colors of the iron range that is um, so my top three favorite handmade watercolor shops would be Rivervale watercolors nibs watercolors and colors of the iron range I really love all of their uh, paints and after Christmas so hopefully in between Christmas and New Year I'll do a few videos and one will be about so we'll go back to the sort of the festival of color and one of them will be about my top three watercolor shops and what you can expect from each if you're looking for you know christmas gifts those are my top three shops i have i frequent them and i love them okay so you can see that i added a touch of blue to the underside of the left of the baubles and you can see that I'm being very uh, carefree here as well. I don't necessarily want complete oval, sh you know, or circle shapes because you don't ever see a tree and see the exact shape, the, the lights and the um, glowing effect and the branches is kind of obscuring a lot of the shapes. So the shapes are more coming off, um, you know, a little bit more subtle. Okay, so now that the ribbon has dried, I'm going back in with a second, uh, not really a wash, but I'm putting in a little bit of the detail here and deepening up some of the shape of the ribbon where it might be twisting. So I'm basically trying to show the curl in the, you know, the ribbon as it hangs from the bow or the, gar or the garland. Okay, so you can see that I've gone back in to the bow as well and I am just bringing out some of those folds in the bow and trying to sort of create a little bit more depth there. By the way, I am loving your uh, photos on Instagram. So when you, you can use the hashtag HerBillowingHeartPaints and if you have followed along with any of the tutorials, um, you know please feel free to upload them there and it's really really lovely to see 
you know how the um, tutorials come to life in your sketchbooks and I think it helps other you know people as well to be able to see your interpretation of the tutorials as well I, I really appreciate it and I know that I can't always you know um, comment on everything but uh, it's just so busy sometimes okay so now we're going to create I kind of finished this part and I was just going to go in with the sort of glow in the background but I just saw this empty space and I really wanted to create a little wall sconce. I think my battery cut me off but a little crystal wall sconce so I've started out with the middle candle and then I've done two on each side which are basically just rectangles and a little flame and then a little curve underneath them for the little dish they sit in and then just two bits of sort of the crystal chandelier you know garland or hanging chain there that I've done and then I'm just adding some diamonds underneath for the uh, crystal parts Okay, so I'm using the Shell Harp Light. This is also from Earth Mineral Arts. And I've just mixed that with a little bit of the pinks and oranges that's still on my plate. So I want the, um, you know, I'm trying to create just a subtle glow and some subtle highlights. So you can see here that, and then I also mix a little bit of yellow in with it for the flame. And I do have a video for this whole palette so you can watch the video and every color is swatched out and I'm pretty sure that the shops are linked below. So I'm using the a little bit of hematite violet here as well with the shell harp light so you know you can use any sort of ochres, browns, some of the um, art graph, the graphite art graph you know will also help this granulate as well so I'm just making a very very light color watered down to um, mimic you know and to give a bit of life to the uh, sconce Okay, so I've mixed in a bit of the Daniel Smith, um, the, what is it, the one I just did, the indigo silvery one. Uh, I've mixed in a little bit of that on the, and so I'm putting that on the shadow side, again to create this faceted light experience. And so I, then I realize I can use that also in the baubles and kind of bring that whole um, dimension of that color through the whole page. Okay, so you can see here that I felt like it lacked a little bit of uh, life. So I've gone back in with the Sennelier Emerald Green. It's a little bit of a brighter green. And you could mix, um, you know, a little bit of yellow in with the green that you have to create, to make it a little bit brighter. But I think it just creates a little bit more color and life to the page. So this is what we have so far.
Okay, so I am now using Duochrome Lipus Sunlight to just put these really highlighted uh, stems, you know, cords in or stems in um, from the bauble to the, the garland. And you can use either the shimmering green FW ink if you have that or just a pearl white with a touch of a green in it. Okay, so now that we have the base in, we're going to start with creating some atmosphere behind the um, garlands here. So I start with just around the sconce here and I'm using, okay, my battery keeps cutting me off, but I am using a touch of the lemon yellow for the brightness of the glow. And then I am muting that down with a little bit of a very watered down orange and a little bit of an like so the shell harp light is what I'm using or you know an ochre French ochre is my preferred ochre the Daniel Smith one but it's not in this palette but um, yeah that's kind of what I'm using so you want a very glowing uh, yellow like the lemon yellow I know that a lot of botanical artists really love lemon yellow for the the brightness that it can bring so you can easily mute it down with you know a French ochre or something like that but you can't bring that brightness from a different yellow so I know they love it for that so you can see here that once we've finished that's what the sconce should look like so we have still a few more things uh, to do but that is what we're shooting for so I'm just going to keep adding atmosphere between the uh, branches and you can see that I'm not um, putting water on the garlands. It wouldn't necessarily matter if you did a little bit, but I, and so I'm kind of overlapping it in some areas, but I don't really want these colors I'm putting on to go over the garlands at this stage for this painting. I just want them to sort of um, be their own thing and then I'm just adding atmosphere between them. So. I am wetting the spaces that I want color and then I again I'm adding those yellows, oranges and the browns to create the atmosphere. Okay, so you can see here that I added some of the pink as well into the background. So you're kind of trying to mirror the colors that you've used in your painting. So, you know, if you were doing like blue or purple, then those are the colors you would put in the background, not the ones I'm using. Although you could still mix those either with a touch of yellows and oranges or um, add those just to create that sort of glowing uh, atmosphere. And then I basically outlined the right side, so the shadow side of everything with the gold ink. So the Windsor & Newton gold ink. Um, and then with this wall sconce, I used the silver Sennelier ink. And I again, I went over the right side of everything just to give that really um, a little bit more depth to the painting. 
And then I also glazed a little bit of the Duochrome Lapis Sunlight over the wreath as well, just to give it a bit more dimension. So here I'm using just a touch of glue on all the ornaments and I am going to put some glitter on. So this is one that I have that I really like. It's just, it's actually an embossing powder. So you can use whatever you have. And that's the other thing I wanted to say. You don't have to use the things that I am showing you. You can use whatever's available to you. I'm sure you already have a collection, you know, of craft items, watercolors, and so, you know, obviously I, I will let you know what colors I'm using if you do want to um, pick those up. But you can use any, you probably have colors that you already like and you already enjoy. So feel free to substitute anything that I use for something you might already have and enjoy. So I think the last thing I did here was add a touch of the interference copper in the uh, sconce and around the baubles there. So you can use the Rivervale Phantom Fire, you can mix a little bit of an orange with uh, a pearl white. And so that is it for today guys. I appreciate all of your comments yesterday about not overdoing it and I, I'm just trying to rework around things. So I. Um, promise that if it gets too much I won't post but uh, every December our family tries to do something like one year we did the 12 cakes of Christmas and we did um, or we do you know knock and runs or things like that but this year you know obviously it's a bit more difficult so I'd like to try and do the advent calendar if I can and yeah hopefully I will see you tomorrow um, with a couple more videos they will probably just have music to them so I will see you then bye